you know, what was it a scam or was it not a scam or like how, oh, that's not really a scam. And I was thinking, well, it's, it's really on a spectrum. I think especially in crypto, they're, they're on a spectrum from, if you think of it like one to 10, one being good intentions, uh, like they have a good idea. It's obviously not practical, but the, the founder's fanatical. They put everything they can into trying it, blood, sweat and tears. They're just crazy about it. But in the end, it's just like, oh, it was just too hard. We, we did everything, but we just couldn't make it happen. Again, completely good intentions, but they still lost everyone's money. And any objective third party looking at it could have been like, whoa, like why? Obviously, this would never work. So those are the type of the thing that uh, Richard uh, talked about before, too, like scams that don't even know they're scams yet. Like they just they come up with these ideas, sound really good, obviously solve a problem, wildly impractical and lose all the money. So those are the ones where it's like, is it a scam? If, you know, if there's bad intentions, I would say yes, but it's just on a spectrum. And then like you, you could go for five being, you know, maybe they're indifferent or they have neutral intentions. They're like, yeah, I just want to make a lot of money. I can do that in crypto, blah, blah, blah. It would be nice if it succeeds, but I'm really focused on just raising as much money as possible to, you know, to, to build up my business acumen or, or something like that. They still fail. They lose everyone's money. Uh, maybe they wanted to succeed and they psychologically like, trick themselves to being like, hey, this must succeed, like no matter what. You know, it's kind of one of those things you give yourself that affirmation of like, I can do it no matter what, I can do it. But they did it, but then they took everyone's money and did it with it and, and lost it all. So still terrible, right? And this is where I put like Theranos. Yeah, I, I would put her in that category of like, I, and, and, you know, I'm sure people have different um, different judgments uh, for, for the uh, former CEO and all that stuff where all that, you know, doc, watch the documentary if you're interested and then make your own uh, evaluation. But for me, she falls in this category of like, I literally believe she convinced herself she could do it, but just, it was just wildly impractical and she ignored you know, every advisor and th there would be objective to tell her about it. And uh, yeah, so maybe that was Theranos. And then, yeah, <laughs> and it always brings my head of like, you know, they probably ignored all the haters. They labeled it all as FUD. You know, first they try to fight you, then they try to, you know, she always did all that stuff. Very charismatic, but still turned out to be a scam. And then number 10 is just like, okay, so total scam, like bad intentions from the start. All they want to do is get as much money as possible and exit to the island. Completely premeditated. Uh, people lose everything with like no consolation prize. Like total total scam, and there's plenty of those in crypto as well. So I think I literally think scams are on a spectrum. It's not like a, a black and white thing. There's just different different intentions that go along with it too. Yeah, I remember the the Squid Games when that that Netflix show came out, and then they mm -hmm. created that coin, and like that thing pumped like so hard in like the first day, and then all of a sudden, boom, straight down, nowhere to be found again. All that money just <laughs> instantly gone. <laughs> Happens all the time. Yeah, yeah. really got to do your own research out there, people, and like. Definitely look into products. Don't just invest in stupid coins because you're thinking you're going to take that. There's always somebody in earlier than you. Unless you know about how it's launched, there's always somebody that knows before you do. So even if you think you're going to get in and get out, there's always somebody that can possibly dump it before you. Just be careful out there. I, th I think the um, only exception for that would be if you were in the Telegram early, <clears throat> if you're in the first 100 people in Telegram of like of Hex, for example, Wow. Wow, wow, did you get into something good? But but that is so rare. That is, you know, you have to get in the, uh, a really good project at, at the, you know, the, the ground and you got to exactly. get into it that way or, or else, you know, just 99% of them are just, are just scams like that. You need the two things to come together. You need not just the, exactly. the getting in early, but you need actually to find a good project. And there's way more, you know, bad projects out there than there are the good ones. So, yeah. And there's plenty of projects. Like I said, there's plenty of projects who have this noble goal of solving some problem. And they're like, if I just had, it's so tempting to say, if I just had enough money, I could do this. I could hire enough devs. I could, you know, just give me millions of dollars. I can do it. And then it turns out to be a complete flop. Like it, it happens. It's unbelievable, but it happens all the time. So not mm -hmm. just a good project. It's like, you almost have to get lucky. You really do. I mean, there, there's, I think there's a, an element of luck involved in this. Nobody can really evaluate what's a good project to a hundred percent degree. Like there are going to be some outliers that, because especially with crypto, that's the different thing about, yeah, that's what we we're talking about too earlier with, with my life, ICOs versus IPOs. A lot of these ICOs would never, ever, ever IPO because there's nobody looking at the financials. There's nobody like evaluating the company. There's nobody doing interviews. There's nobody like doing in-person type stuff. Most of the founders are either anonymous uh, they either no, never show their face and there's some good founders who never show their face too, I'll, I'll say, but you know, most of them never show their face or they're, you know, there's some country that you'll never get to them. So there's, it's so hard to find these projects. So when you do Richard Hargis system, you want to stay in, you want to hang on to that type of stuff because you're surrounded 
you know, you make your own luck when you do this kind of, when you kind of find these type of gyms. Yeah, you bring up a good point, like, because Richard is pretty much in the public. You know, we'd like to see more of him lately with some more updates, but <laughs> he, he's definitely yeah. been out there. So he does go on stream. He does discuss things. He's you know, came he's to America. His, Can't fuck that anymore. America. Exactly. Yeah. So where are you, man? That was, who, who was that that was saying that? Eric Wall. Wall, Wall. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I bet he won't I come to he, America. He, he I think he's airplane an orange picture. maximalist, actually. I think he's just out there fudding because he owns a crap load of hex. That's what I'm thinking. All right, no, I'm with you. I've said that before, too. I'm like, I think he's a secret uh, hexagon who's just he's just pushing the right buttons to try to motivate Richard. Yeah, he's he's like the 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 anti Richard. And he's just out there like fudding. <laughs> pretend Eric fudding. Wall's an anti-hero. I, I like it. <laughs> I like it. I like it.